Good morning, and welcome to the Church of St. Adalbert. Here are some announcements. Today, our Welcome Home to the Eucharist campaign begins. Father Frizzoni will talk later about how we can be disciples and mail a postcard to a friend or family member to invite them back home to Christ. Please see Father's column in this week's bulletin for more information. The Works of Mercy initiative needs your assistance with recipes for their cookbook campaign. What is your favorite dish? Please share this recipe so others can experience this and help support those in need. The bulletin has instructions on how to submit your recipes. Thank you. The Polish American Day is today at the Orysville Shrine. Stations of the Cross begin at 3 p.m. and Mass begins at 4 p.m. Please see our bulletin for details. Today's Mass is applied for the repose of these souls. Bruce Ballack, John and Monica Fiatkowski, Kathleen Serafino, Violet Joel Campan, Diane Sardinsky, Jan and Chet Granado and Trainer family, Barbara Coglin, Vina Aini, Eleanor Pigliavento, Philip DePaolo, Edward Doris and Michael Kubik, Tasia Bowman, deceased Napic and August family members, Louisa and John Waldron, Anne Maximik, Anthony and Margaret Piccolino, Anthony Piccolino Jr., Giovanna Zarelli, Nicole and Bettina Grasso, Jonathan Mills, Barbara Crystal, Catherine and Peter Morofsky, Richard Sickler, Robert Adamic, David Pascarillo, Patrick Rio, Aria Galarza, Carmelina Caldwell, and Edda Ferrante. Our Mass will begin momentarily. Once again, welcome.
placed all around me, shielding the strife. Christ in my rising, light of my life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You give us new life by water and the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. And you are the way and the truth and the life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord of Sheba, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David in Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot and be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Who do you say that I am? The question of our Lord Jesus that Simon Peter dared to answer. What might our answer be? To this question. Every day, Tim would visit Margaret in the nursing home. And when he visited his wife, Margaret, every morning he would introduce himself anew as the wife and husband, married in the state of vocation of marriage. But Margaret would forget every day what Tim said the day before. So Margaret could not remember that she was his wife for 52 years. Margaret could not remember that they had children and grandchildren and lived generally a very happy and blessed life. And at the end of their time in the morning, Tim would say goodbye 
And then the next day, Tim would repeat over again all of what he shared with Margaret. Hello, Margaret. And Margaret did not know who Tim was the next day. I am your husband. I am your husband of 52 years. And we have beautiful children and grandchildren. See, here are their pictures over on the window. And then Margaret would look over and with a big smile acknowledge in that moment her memory being the wife of Tim. Now, eventually, Tim's children asked, why do you repeat this over and over again? She doesn't remember who she is. Why do you have to go through it over and over again? Just sort of let it be and don't say anything. But this is what Tim said to his children who pondered why he goes through this ritual every morning. And I quote for you, but I know who she is. And I know who I am. We will be known more for our actions than for our words in life. Tim represents for us the heart of the Father. He represents the Father because even when we forget who the Son is in our lives, the Father brings us back to the memory of who Jesus is and how Jesus has saved us and brought us the possibility of eternal life. The body and the mind may fail, and there may be a moment in your life or mine when I cannot remember or you cannot remember who you are or who I am. And we will need somebody like Tim to help spark the memory if we lose the ability to remember who we are We know there is someone in our lives that will help us remember. Simon Peter took great risk to say, you are not just a teacher, you are not just another man who walked the earth or another son of man, but you are the Christ. You have come to save us. You are the son of the living God. And what a wonderful joy for Peter to declare this good news. And as a result, great authority was invested in Peter. Look at the authority of Tim. Tim's authority in being with his wife was not based on power, but the authority that emanated from God is based in service. Those of you in the vocation of marriage will know what it takes to serve each other. And to the very end, until the day of Margaret's death, There Tim was, near Margaret's last days, that became difficult to know because she was unable to speak. But yet, Tim to the very end was faithful to who he was and reminded in love Margaret, who was there for him in troubled times of the past too. And so it is with our lives It isn't just the body or the mind that can fail, but sometimes the spirit can fail. We pray sometimes in church for those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. But isn't it the case that sometimes people's spirit can fail, just like the mind or the body or the heart? In the failure of the spirit, we begin to lose hope in God and we begin to conclude to ourselves that either God does not exist or if God exists, he has doomed me because of all of the problems of my life that I catalog here, all of these 15 or 20 problems, while we forget all of the blessings that the Lord has given us as well. Notice in sacred scripture God invests authority in humble people. Eliakim, St. Paul, one of the biggest sinners ever in the history of the world. Peter, 
who would deny our Lord three times. There's an investment here God is making in the humble. And sometimes in life, we say, if the priest leaves the parish, I'm out. I follow him. I follow the parish priest. I can understand him maybe better than the priest up the street. Or if there's some bad news, uh, I'm going to give up the Catholic faith. If this is the case, where is our faith to begin with? Is our faith in men? Or is our faith in Christ, Son of the living God? Dear family, I hope I am here for another 40 or 50 years. (laughs) But the action of the Holy Spirit is what it is. And I have no idea. Whatever God wills, this is what we have to do. Priests will come and go. The news may come and go. But the bark of Peter, which serves Jesus, will be forever. Let us invest not in men and women in the sense of the faith of God. We must invest in the spirit that recognizes the identity of Christ in our lives. Christ, the Son of the living God. Priest may be here and gone. The news may be here and gone. But your Catholic faith and mine comes from the authority of God, not men and women. So no matter what may happen, the bark of Peter may continue despite being rocked around by the waves that we remain steadfast in our faith. That faith must be strong. Jesus gives us a teaching authority in today's gospel, but especially to his, St. Peter and his successors. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And that authority is meant for service and also to tell us what the path may be to be saved in him. If we are expecting to be saved, then we must live like Jesus, a life of the cross. Like Tim visiting Margaret every day, reminding her of who she was. That's because Tim was very confident in who he was. And so are we. We are confident that God has ordained a path for us that we may know him, may serve him, and may love him. We do that by serving others and avoiding sin. So what do people think about me? And what do you think about me, Simon Peter? It is the opinion that Jesus asks of each one of us, who do you say that I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And there will be waves, but do not be afraid. I share with you the wisdom of St. Francis de Sales. We heard from him last week, too. His continued teaching helps us to be people of the way, to know our identity in him. Listen to these special words. Fear not evil to come upon you from this world, for perhaps such evil will never happen. And even if it should happen, God will strengthen you. He commanded St. Peter to walk upon the waves. Remember that two weeks ago? We just prayed that. (laughs) And St. Peter, seeing the winds and the storm, was afraid. And fear sank him. He sought the assistance of his master who said, Man of little faith, why did you doubt? And reaching out his hand, our Lord helped him. If God requires you to walk on the waves of adversity, fear not, doubt not. God will be with you. Have good courage, and you shall be delivered. This is great wisdom 
because Jesus Christ is yesterday, today, and forever. The priests may come and go. Our neighbors may come and go. We all will fall asleep in the Lord one day. But we hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith, each to our own condition, because we know that God is with his church as he ordained and inaugurated it to be a light for the world. Christ yesterday, today, and forever. You are Christ. You are the Son of the living God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us continue to pray for one another. For the church, that we may be instruments of God's mercy and guides for all who are seeking the Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, the successor to St. Peter, that the Holy Spirit will guide him in proclaiming the good news, promoting unity in the church, and inspiring us to greater love and service, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are discerning God's call in their life, that they may recognize the promptings of the Holy Spirit and be open to how they can best love and serve in the Lord's name, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been rejected by their family, that they may experience God's loving acceptance and be welcomed by our family here, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, that God's healing love will strengthen them and restore them to wholeness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased family and friends, especially Bishop Howard Hubbard, and those for whom this Mass is applied, that they may share in the gift and promise of eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our prayer intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all of these prayers through Christ, our Lord. Today's second collection will be for the Catholic Home Missions. Thank you for your generosity.
teaching Drink wine of wisdom Are given here A taste of the kingdom Together join Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward Scharfenberger, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, everyone. Peace be with you.
eternal life to us who receive him. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Father, and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Did you know that you can be an evangelist for the gospel without ever uttering a single word? Yes, that's true. We're having our welcome home to the Eucharist weekend, September 23rd and 24th. Now, you're all going to get this in the U.S. mail eventually, but we can be disciples because we need to send this to a friend or a family member, this postcard, someone who's not here with us to be welcomed home to Christ and to the Eucharist. So. As we exit church today, we're going to have one or two for you. If you can put a stamp on the postcard and mail it to someone, please take one. If not, we'll leave it for someone else. So for two stamps and not a single word uttered, we can be evangelists. So what a great campaign. I hope it works out very well. So postcards, one or two for all of us. We have great ideas. Last but not least, we forgot to include in the announcements. Pierogi making. We need your help to make pierogi for this week in for the Polish platter drive through dinner we're going to have. Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday. 9 a.m. each day in the school. So pierogi for Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday, 9 a.m. Many hands make short work. Lunch is provided. So thank you for your help in advance. All right, everyone, take good care and have a wonderful week ahead. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Hey.